Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be showing you guys four different React libraries that are kind of hidden and by that I mean they don't have a lot of uh, monthly and weekly downloads. However, I found myself in the past using them for a variety of reasons and for that reason I wanted to show it to you guys as well. Now keep in mind, I'm not endorsing the use of any of these libraries. I'm rather just showcasing them to you because I can never guarantee that they're going to be maintained. I can never guarantee that they're going to be uh, not, not going to contain bugs. So keep that in mind as you watch the video. Uh, this is just me demonstrating and showcasing some libraries that I think are pretty cool. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Before we get into the video, I would like to talk to you guys about today's video sponsor, IP Royal. IP Royal is a proxy service with a single goal, which is to provide safe, private, and unrestricted access to the internet. With the current amount of difficulties that people have accessing the internet, um, IP Royal has been a game changer for me. They help clients all over the world to add an extra layer of security to their networks. But not only for that, you can also use it to perform market research access geo-restricted websites, avoid censorship, and also utilize bots to find better deals online. So there's a lot of use cases that IP Royal can help you with. And you might wonder, how does it work? Well, it's actually quite simple. IP Royal allow their clients to use their proxy servers whenever they connect to the internet from any device. The proxy server will act as an intermediate layer in between you and the website you're trying to access, which means that it will replace your IP address and ensure your privacy when you're trying to access resources online. Whether you're a business trying to perform some web scraping or you're just someone trying to watch Netflix from a different country, IP Royal has you covered. Now, the best part is that IP Royal is currently actually running a really nice deal. And if you're interested in taking a look, check out the link in the description and use the coupon code Pedro at checkout to receive 30% off. The coupon code is Pedro, P-E-D-R-O. Use that at checkout and you will have a pretty nice discount. You guys know that with every sponsorship I take, I always recommend a product that I've personally tried in the past. And I do think they have a really good service. So that's why I'm recommending. Um, so that's basically it. I really appreciate uh, IP Royal for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the actual video. Okay, everyone. So the first library I'm going to show you guys is called React Lag. This is actually a pretty simple library because basically what it does is just creates um, tooltips, drop down menus, and um, other types of UI components that uh, are kind of annoying to build on your own. And the, the good thing about this is that there's a lot of libraries out there that allow you to create a tooltip, right? You can just download material UI and they have a component for that. The thing is, uh, this one is pretty lightweight and it's very flexible. So I found it good in my use case because um, it's, it's very straightforward. You just, it's not a lot of code, although uh, it's very reusable code. There is a bit of code that you can put, you have to put as boilerplate, but it's pretty much reusable. So uh, they do it in this way such that it, it is both easy to use and also flexible for you to customize it your, yourself. So let's take a look at an example of how um, it can be used. Okay, so over here, I have the code um, for a simple example, a simple tooltip component that can be used using the library. You can see I installed React Leg. It uses a lot of the new React notation and syntax. You can see it's mainly just using hooks, which is pretty good. It updated from a previous version of the library. Uh, and the way you do it is basically you create the component. Uh, the hook use hover allows you to detect if you're hovering over a piece of text. So you can, for example, create a tooltip. And if you wanted to do that, uh, you would just basically follow this code. The reason why I'm not explaining step by step is because uh, this code is reusable. Like I said, it, it, you just reuse, you uh, just change the children, you change the content of your tooltip, and that's pretty much it. If you want to see an example, this is how it would look. I just have a piece of text, and whenever I hover it, a little tooltip appears over here. You can customize the UI as well for the tooltip. I just made it as simple as possible since I don't wanna to spend too much time on this library. But uh, you can see uh, it's pretty simple, pretty easy to use. And whenever I need a tooltip again, all I have to do is just copy and paste this tooltip component, which is already pre-made for us. Now, the reason why they don't have a specific like tooltip component that you can just 
import into your library is exactly for what I just said. Uh, you want to be able to customize because not all examples are going to be exactly like the one that the library created. So it's pretty good that they do it this way uh, in order to maximize the use cases for the user. Okay, everyone. So now let's get into the second library I wanted to talk about in this video, which is the React Tiny Virtual List Library. Now, I think this library is... It's not that famous, but it's definitely used by a, a good amount of people that I've, I've worked with. And that's how I found I found out about it. And its main purpose is to create virtualized list components in react such that you can render very large lists while maintaining a uh, good performance in your website. Now, everyone who's worked with lists in, in react before knows the concept of virtualized lists. And there's actually a lot of libraries out there that actually help you to do so. The reason why I like this library specifically is because it has a pretty small bundle, which um, when you're using or utilizing uh, this for only one use case inside of your project, it makes sense to want to minimize the amount of um, memory and occupation of your bundle size you're, you're, you're having. So uh, I think this library could be really useful in those cases. I actually have an example here, which I want to show you guys of how it would look like using this library. So as you can see over here, this would be the code um, for creating a virtualized list component. Uh, as you can see, I imported from the React Tiny Virtual List library. And I created as an example, a very simple list over here, which is just a list of items uh, with a thousand items. So it is a pretty big list. Um, there's websites like Instagram where you have to list like inf an infinite amount technically, uh, like not literally, but you get what I mean, like a, a very, very large amount of items. And um, if this works with a thousand, it's pretty good. But imagine how useful this would be on a website such as Instagram or TikTok or something like that. Um, and then all I have to do is just import the virtual list component and put it like this, and it will optimize everything for us. It will only render uh, whatever element, whatever we put over here um, as the render item. And we can even determine what uh, is the size of, of the amount of items we want to render at each time. If we wanted to see the actual example working, we have here the website, right? will render 50 items at a time. But when we scroll past 50, it will render the next uh, chunk, right? Which again, it makes it easier because it's not rendering everything at once. And it's pretty simple to use. So I would definitely recommend you guys to use something like this. Okay, so now that we've got past uh, two of the ones that I think are actually <laughs> the more useful in a general case, this ones over here are just cool, in my opinion, because uh, they're very specific use case scenarios that we've seen in a lot of websites, which uh, this would be necessary, but you probably don't have an idea of how you would do so. So I'm here to present you guys just the the concept. And if you guys find it uh, in, useful in one use case, you could, could just refer back to this video. So what I'm talking about is this library called emoji picker react. Now there's a lot of emoji picker libraries out there. I think there's like emoji mart. I, I don't I'm, I don't remember if that's a name. But actually, I found this one to be the best because of the bundle size again, and the amount of uh, customization you can actually implement on this. Uh, I didn't do much customization. As you can see, uh, it kind of looks massive uh, on the screen. Oh, it, it looked massive because I was zoomed in. But yeah, this is basically the size of the emoji picker. And why would this be useful? Well, imagine a scenario where you have an input, right? And um, you want to be able to choose the user to choose emojis really easily because you know, emojis are really important nowadays. And uh, everywhere we see them. And I know, like on some uh, computers or some devices, there are a very quick accessibility to emojis. But I know that in a lot of uh, computers, there's not so it would be good to add something like this. And I know for a fact, a lot of websites add something like this, maybe they make it their own, or they use a library like this. So if you ever find yourself in a necessity, I would recommend putting this on almost all of the inputs. And it's pretty good because you can choose see you can choose everything you can, you can search for emojis, like I can come over here. And this is all implemented really simply by using just the emoji picker component, which they have over here, they can also have uh, you can they also have a function called on emoji click which you can determine what you do when you click on the actual uh, emoji you're choosing. As of right now, all I'm doing is I'm just uh, console logging, as you'll see over here, right, if I pick this one, it will just console log a bunch of information about the emoji, which you can actually use to translate if you have different emojis on different devices, right? Because if you guys know, uh, iOS emojis are different from Android and emojis. So uh, it's just a cool library, in my opinion, may not be useful for everyone. But it's useful for whenever you need it. So that's that's good for me. Okay, everyone. So now let's get into the last library I wanted to talk about. This one is again, not that useful for a lot of people. But whenever you find yourself in this use case, you will actually want to use this. 
This is actually a library that allows you to really easily copy stuff into your clipboard by just clicking a button. So it simulates the ability of selecting something, right? Selecting this and doing co command C or control C or just uh, copying it this way, right? So that's what we want to do. Now, how would we do that? Because we've seen this in a lot of websites, right? So I have this example over here, uh, just to show you guys how this library actually works. So as you can see, we have here a big piece of text, right? As if you would have in, in a website. And I could obviously copy that by just either like just copying like this or putting command C. But the thing is, we want to click on this button to be able to, to actually copy the text. As you can see, if I paste uh, right now, my clipboard just has this single word. But if I were to click on copy text, it would now change to copy to clipboard. And if I were to paste this, you see the whole text that was over here was actually copied. This is all done by the library. Like I showed the code. Um, this is the code. It has a really nice hook called use copy. The name of the actual library is use copy. And um, honestly, it's not that much uh, to implement for such an, a quick way to, to implement this feature that a lot of websites out there have. And it's pretty interesting. So this were actually all of the libraries I wanted to talk about in this video. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please have a like down below and comment what you want to see next and subscribe because I'm gonna be posting at least twice a week from now on. Um, this video is pretty short, but it's because I haven't posted in a month. And that's crazy. It's the most amount of time I haven't posted ever since I started YouTube. And it's all because um, I was going through burnout, I was going through um, through finals at university. Now um, it's summer. So I have a lot of work to be put on to, to make more videos for you guys. Um, I'm gonna be bringing a lot of new stuff, bringing merch, bringing courses, bringing everything. Uh, I'm gonna devote 100% of my time to YouTube. Again, thank you IP Royal for sponsoring this video. Uh, they really helped me out. Um, and it would really help me out as well if you guys could go check them out. So with that in mind, uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.